The roar of NASCAR has rolled into Saskatoon. This beautiful one-third mile oval is a racer's track, and today marks the second leg of a storied journey. It was a slugfest last week at Edmonton International Raceway as NASCAR beat and banged its way through Alberta. Tagliani took home victory number three and threw his name into the championship conversation. Points leader Andrew Ranger played the points game well. Young Caden Lapsovich put forth a blue-collar grind-about effort as he looks to keep in contention. This prairie jewel of a track represents a new start for some and a road to the championship for others as the second half of the 2016 NASCAR Pinty Series begins here in Saskatoon. Just north of the City of Bridges, we're at Wyant Group Raceway in Saskatchewan as Bear Crop Science presents the Velocity Prairie Thunder 250. Hello and welcome to one of the most entertaining third mile racetracks in all of Canada. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's trackside. Adam, we've had some phenomenal NASCAR races here in Saskatoon. What makes this track so great? Dave, this is a track for the racers. It's a high bank, third mile oval. You don't drive this racetrack, you race it. It's run by a local racing club, and it's been a great track for fans and racers alike since we've been coming here the years of Cascar. Just days ago, Alex Tagliani took his fifth NASCAR win of his career and his third on the season, while others were licking their wounds. That 18 bunch is a new look on the championship after missing the opening round. And that team's focus was always the owner's championship because they knew Tag was going to run the Indy 500. Now he's only 26 points out of the lead, even though he missed a race. And 16-year-old Caden Lapsovich and his family have turned heads in this venture. As they were only supposed to run part-time, they've turned it into a legitimate run for both the 2016 title and the Justin's Rookie of the Year. Here's Shania LaForce, the only female driver in the series this season. There's the 09 of Jamie Krizik after a fourth place run last week in Edmonton back again here today. And with more on how they lined up after E3 spark plug time trials, let's head down to Todd. Thanks, guys. A familiar sight here on the front row at Saskatoon. The number 27 Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger picks up his second pull of the season. He just missed the track record by a hair, turned this one-third mile oval in 14.657 seconds. He's looking for a solid result. Was third here last year. Needs another good result to hold on to that points a nice surprise along the front row as well. It's the number one of Joey McComb. This CBRT group did an incredible job just to get this car ready. The whole rear end has been rebuilt. Joey making just his second start of the season, has his best career starting position, now hoping for a good solid result after 250 laps of racing tonight. Let's go back up the track to get the event started. the call here in Saskatoon as your points leader Andrew Ranger fires up his Dodge. And there's potential winners from the front of this field all the way to the back. Tagliani on two wins in a row. DJ Kennington make up the second row. This is stacked. Let's check in with tonight's in-race reporter Mark Dilley. Mark, it's Dave Bradley in the booth. Do you have a copy? I do, Dave. Go ahead. Mark, this is one of your favorite tracks. It's 250 laps, which to some is a long race, but really it can go quickly, can it? Oh, for sure. If we get a long breed frog and it won't take too long to click off the lap, that's for sure. Hey, Mark, it's Adam Ross. When you practiced this afternoon, it was awfully hot. We can see the shadows forming. This is a great two-groove racetrack. How do you think it's going to change tonight? Yeah, there's definitely two grooves, and as the sun goes down, that outside groove will come into play a lot more, but definitely uh, run right top or bottom. It's, you're going to see cars all over the place today. Good luck tonight, Mark. Thank you very much. And we will continue with a clean flow starting lineup. You see Mark Dilley there in row number three. Looking back to row number four, Kelly Admiral back behind the wheel of the 56. There's Jason Hathaway in the number three. If you can believe it, the first time this season, Caden Lapsovich has not been on the front row at an oval. Gary Clute's alongside. Then L.P. Dumoulin and Kevin Lacroix make up row number six. Looking back to row number seven, we'll see Nick Jewell in the 51, and there is Noel Dowler in the 53. Extensive repairs on that machine. Jamie Krizik will start in the 09, and Kevin Poitras will join him in row number eight. In the ninth row, Ian Admiral on the inside in the 83, and Jason Hankowicz who had a fine lead lap run the other night, starting 18th and rounding out the field, Shania LaForce in the 01. 
A full field of NASCAR Pinty Series cars. And again, we'll have a number of onboard shots, including one from the 0-1 of Shania LaForce as she'll try and make her way up through the field. But Adam, let's take a look at the E3 Spark Flux race analysis. Dave, we already talked about third mile racy racetrack. Perfect racing conditions for these drivers and teams tonight. And Adam, important to note, this is a brake race. So we'll have pit stops at the halfway mark. And with more on that, let's head down pit side and check in with Todd with tonight's Leland lead up to the green. Guys, a few things we're keeping an eye on just before we go green here. The talk amongst all the drivers, the bump, the big bump in corner number one. Hit it right, you're fine. Hit it wrong, it gets you very loose going through the corner. Also watch driver number 51, Nick Jewell, who starts 13th. Western competitor making his first start of the season. If all goes well, he hopes to run Kawartha also. And the 0-1 of Shania LaForce had some problems during qualifying with electrical issues. They believe they've got it corrected. She's hoping to complete all 250 tonight. That's DJ Cannington trying to pump up his team as Andrew Ranger is going to lead the field to green in the Velocity Prairie Thunder 250. We're underway. So Mary Haas gave the command and waved the green flag tonight representing Bayer Crop Sciences. Love the sound of these NASCAR race cars at full song as Joey McComb and the Pilate number one gets a little shove from the 18 of Alex Tagliani, but he hangs on to it. The bump on the racetrack is not the only area of concern going into turn one tonight. Especially if you're Joey McComb at this point. Now it's Mark Dilly up on the outside of the one. But put the EpiPen, number 18 of Alex Tagliani up into second spot, chasing your early race leader. Oh, and Tagliani into the wall. All by DJ was right behind him, but I don't believe they made contact, Dave. No, but Tagliani definitely made hard contact with that outside wall. We'll have to watch that race car for the next few laps, make sure he didn't knock anything loose in the suspension. Well, he's still got some company on the inside. It's the Castro Edge Dodge to DJ Kennington working over the 18 for second spot. He'll have it at the line, but just by a nose as Tagliani continues to maintain pace up on the outside. We'll have another look at what happened. So there's the camera looking up the racetrack. It's a brush, but still any contact. It's strange that these cars can take a big pounding and then sometimes you hit them a certain way you knock something loose. It's funny, it looked a lot harder at race speed. When we looked at it at the replay, it was more of a brush. And the car still looks loose to me, still washing up the racetrack. And it reminds me of Scott Steckley in the 22, the driver that won this race. His car was always a handful for the first 10, 20 laps, but then it was dynamite. Race a little bit further back in the field. This is for sixth spot between the 32 of Alex LeBay and the three car of Jason Hathaway as we ride on board Kelly Admiral. Kelly Admiral doing a great job in the 56. It's owned by Jim Bray, but they made a deal to get it towed out west. He's run both the races out here and given that car some really good laps. And you see the car with the yellow rookie stripe on the back bumper. Caden Lapsovich just tucked in behind this battle as well in the 76. We talked about it when we, we introduced the starting lineup. This is the first time he hasn't started on the front row all the way back in the ninth spot after being the fastest car in practice. Well, you have to remember, we've talked about his age quite a bit, just 16 years old. He has only made 11 NASCAR Pinty Series starts. That's not much experience to lean back on when you do start deep in the field. Uh, on board with Alex LeBay looking backwards. And then back with Kane and Lapsovich in the 76. It's a good little dice there with the Ray Bestis number three of Jason Hathaway up on the outside the Chevrolet trying to get things going here. Hathaway has had horrible luck in 2016 and has yet to win so far this season as we ride on board the WeatherTech Dodge of LP Dumoulin. I'm almost surprised there's not a little black cloud hovering <laughs> over the Jason Hathaway race car. Andrew Ranger continues to lead here in Saskatoon as his crew watches on. This NASCAR on TSN telecast from Saskatoon is brought to you by Young's Tree Service, servicing the greater Edmonton area, Leduc and Parkland counties. By Mopar, authentic performance. And by Pinty's, making great food fun. Still under green here at Wyatt Group Raceway in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, as we ride on board your eighth place competitor, Jason Hathaway in the Ray Bestis Chevrolet. 
And who better to ride on top of their car for these oval track races the last few years than Jason Hathaway? As we mentioned, his luck hasn't been great, but it's bound to change, Dave. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix deep into the Justin's Rookie of the Year battle as Kelly Admiral gets some pressure in the 56. They're battling for the 11th spot on the racetrack. And there's the 0-1 of Shania LaForce to the inside, several laps down in the early going. She's already made one pit stop here, Dave, and that was the team's plan. They're using this as a learning experience. Once she got lapped, they were going to duck onto pit road, make some adjustments, and send her out again. Look at this battle at the front, though, and it is turning into a battle of teammates as Andrew Ranger continues to lead in the Volpar Dodge, but here comes the Castro Edge NPP Dodge of DJ Kennington. It's awesome to hear DJ roll onto the throttle as Hathaway on the inside, Alex LeBay on the outside. They continue to battle for seventh. This is the beauty of Wyatt Group Raceway. We've talked about this beautiful two-group racy racetrack, and there's proof. You can get the advantage on the inside. The hard thing is to get onto the power and come up to the wall without the car on the outside getting such a good run of momentum. On board the WeatherTech Dodge of LP Dumoulin. You remember, here in Saskatoon, this is where he notched his only oval track victory of his NASCAR career. It was impressive. A green-white checker finish for L.P. Dumoulin to take that win as Caden Lapsovich battles with the 0-2 of Mark Dillick. I should mention, too, that Byron Nelson from Leland Industries, a large group from that company, here to cheer on Mark and the 0-2 crew, and Mark putting on a good show in the early going. The Leland group always has a great time when they come to the track, Dave. Don't they? They always bring a party with them, for sure. And now it's Caden Lapsovich taking the look underneath the 0-2 of Mark Dillick. These two had a real heated battle in Edmonton. Let's see if it carries on here as we have a look at Nick Jewell in the 51 and Kevin Poitras in the 25 making his oval track debut. And we should mention, too, he's driving for CBRT and that whole CBRT group, including the number one of Joey McComb, involved in a great charity, Laps for MD, along with Gary Clute in the 59. That whole group have signed up. If they lead a lap, money gets donated to muscular dystrophy, which is wonderful. Awesome to see these teams using what they've got to work with to, to help great causes, Dave. And the one in the thick of it right now, Shania LaForce on the inside, Tagli any pressuring the back bumper of the one. Joey McComb, as we look a little bit further back now, Dilly has the 76 on his back bumper, and then the three of Hathaway is right there as well. Joey McComb's been very fast. He caught Jamie Krizik in the 090, really hasn't been able to do anything with him, and now he may be pinned to the bottom, Dave. And he caught the curbing down low, and that almost cost him. As you saw him slide up the racetrack just a little bit, look at Tagliani up on the outside. Well, right, it's already cost him that spot to Tagliani. He committed to the outside. Joey's still working that inside groove, but here comes Dilly. On the gas and then easing it through, that second groove is definitely picking up. Tagliani has set sail. Dilly trying to use it to his advantage as a pair of Fords battle nose to tail. LP Doolin to the bottom of Alex LeBay coming off a of turn number four. That's a battle for the eighth position. Love that shot from on board the Can-Am Kappa number 32 of LeBay. As you can see him at work, but you can also see how close they get. And look at this traffic on the front straightaway. That's Jason Hankowitz in the nine. McComb trying to make it three wide. It's a two-groove racy track. It's not quite three. <laughs> you saw McComb get a hip check from the 47 of Dumoulin as Dumoulin wanted by, but McComb managed to get back down. Outside, outside. You got somebody on the outside. You're outside still. Outside still. You're clear. So Gary Clute spotter giving him the Q3 wide going into turn number three. Admiral backs out and laps of it just spotter clears him. Smart move by Kelly Admiral in the Young's Tree Service, number 56. As he lives to race another lap, that could have got messy pretty quickly. You know, I think the difference here, Dave, McComb's car just won't work on the outside. Dilly, Hathaway, a lot of them able to use both grooves. Sometimes your setup kind of limits you to where you can run on the racetrack. Krizik in the 09, touched to the inside. He's a lap down, getting out of the way of this battle.
amongst the series of cars led by the 0-2, the Leland Ford of Mark Dilley. And Dilley way up the racetrack in turn number one. Jason Hathaway not able to take advantage. You know what, though? He's sitting in fourth spot right now, and he's able to make that outside groove work. He's keeping up the momentum, and that's working for his setup right now. Now McComb's gone to the outside of the 0-9 as Caden Lapsovich looking to take advantage. Gary Clute, Alex LeBay have committed to the top. Lapsovich, he's willing to go to the bottom and try to make it work. Battle for ninth spot underneath. Whoa, we got a car around. It's the one of Joey McComb, and Admiral gets collected. So does Hankowitz in the nine. Caution flag flies for the first time. Man, oh man, that accident was about 15 laps in the making, Dave. <laughs> it sure was, but heartbreak for that team as they worked so hard to repair the damage from Edmonton. You know, McComb finally got a run to the outside, and I think he just drove too deep on the high side. Yeah, he started to go around and couldn't stop, yeah, unfortunately. Oh, and he is not happy. Joey McComb out of his car on the front stretch as Alex LeMay hits pit road. 32 taking the opportunity during this caution period to make a stop. The crew described it as super loose. That's how Alex LeBay's got that car. Spring rubber pulled out an adjustment that will hopefully help him have a better handle on that 32 machine. And Gary Clute getting some work done as well. You see a crew member roll underneath making adjustments. So big time, a spring rubber coming out of the back end of the 59 as we continue under caution in the Velocity Prairie Thunder 250. On board the Mopar Dodge Avenger Ranger from Roxton Pond, Quebec, as he gets sent for the first restart of the Velocity Prairie Thunder 250 here at the White Group Raceway in Saskatoon. About to go green. Kevin Poitras got the free pass that time. We're going racing once again, Dave. As they cross the stripe, where 75 laps in the books. And a bump into turn one from Alex Tagliani on the 27 of Ranger. Last week in Edmonton, it was not good to be stuck on the outside. Here tonight, you can make it work anywhere. And Hathaway makes it work three wide on the inside. DJ Kennington will argue that point as he lost the most ground in that one. He was stuffed way up on the outside of the racetrack, but gathered it back up. Now he's down low where it's safe and sound and picking up positions. And that's Warren Jones, the spotter for Alex Tagliani, telling him who's running along the inside. Again, that car not coming up to speed quite right, Dave. Now you remember the 18 hit the wall in the early laps. The EpiPen Dodge hasn't really been the same since. He didn't hit it very hard, but just brushed it enough to maybe change the setup on that race car. A look back from the back bumper of Caden Lapsovich. He just made a pass for the fourth position. Looking back to DJ Kennington and the Castro Edge Dodge, and Kennington has some company in the bumper-to-bumper -bumper Dodge of Kevin Lacroix. Kevin Lacroix has been so impressive with how he's adapted to these oval tracks, Dave. One driver out of the race already, and Todd standing by with him down pit side. Todd? Joey McComb, happy to see that you're all right. But what a job this CBRT group did just to get you ready. Sorry to see you out so early. Yeah, the team, uh, they worked so hard to get this car ready for this race. And I mean, I, I, they did the impossible. I mean, I was ready to just pack it in and go home after Edmonton. But uh, what a phenomenal job they did and the hard work that they did. Joey McComb will spend the rest of the day cheering on his team car, Kevin Poitras. And you saw just as we were heading down to Todd, the 0-1 of Shania LaForce had spun. Caution is out for the second time. She didn't make any contact with anything, Dave, so a little bit of bruised pride. As you can see, everyone taking evasive action. The 0-9 of Jamie Krizak actually had gone around first, and Shania locked it down to avoid. And there's the 18 of Alex Tagliani, also down pit lane. They're changing that right rear. NASCAR allowing them to do that outside of the pit window. And we're going to see why here Hathaway stops it three wide down the inside. Significant contact. And under NASCAR rule, they have what's called an emergency tire. They will still be able to change two tires at halftime. But if you cut or damage a tire, you can put on an emergency tire. But he has his work cut out for him now as we get set for restart number two here on lap 91. Green flag is back up. We're back on way. Work on the outside is Jason Hathaway. You see him navigate that bump. Mark Dilley having a look to the bottom. And if you look closely, you can actually see the monkey on the back of Jason Hathaway that's been following him around all year in 2016. 
Steve Simmons talking to his driver, Andrew Ranger. There comes a time when the spotter doesn't really have to say much because the driver knows he's still there, Dave. You almost feel the presence of the other driver on the inside as Hathaway does have a nose in the lead right now. And it looks like he'll solidify that tank top spot at the line that time by. Right with you on the bottom. Outside. All clear. There was time to talk again. Tell him when it's clear and he can use the whole racetrack. But there's so much action there. Andrew doesn't want to use the whole racing line. He wants to look for the opening. Still out there. Zero two working the bottom with you. Still outside. Head the door. That's still out there was the 76 of Caden Lapsovich, who has slowly and quietly worked his way to the front and is now battling for second spot. This is a battle between the top two in points. What a great view of Lapsovich and Ranger, the youngest driver in the field with a borrowed spotter he picked up locally for this race and one of the veterans in the field with the youngest spotter in the entire series. And look at the one car in this lead group. The 76 has empty quarter panels and an empty hood. They're doing a lot of this coming out of their own pocket. Ace Services have provided a lot of help for this Western trip. As we go on board, LP Dumoulin of the WeatherTech 47 as he battles the bumper-to-bumper -bumper 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Remember, that 74 crew had a lot of work to do after Edmonton. That car did not look as good as it does right now. Well, I'll tell you, a local bumper-to-bumper -bumper shop opened their doors to Don Thompson and the race team. A big presence here tonight at the racetrack. And here's a battle for the lead. The 76 of Caden Lapsovich to the inside of the three of Jason Hathaway. They're going to go side-by-side down the front chute. And Caden sailed that car down into turn number three a little bit more ginger down in one and two as Hathaway nice and smooth on the outside and caution comes out you can see why it's the number nine of Jason Hankowitz and the 51 of Nick Jewell get crossways coming out of turn number four so that's gonna negate that battle at the front of the field and just as it was heating up between Caden Lapsovich and Jason Hathaway good luck at the spotters here at Saskatoon Jason Hathaway continues to lead Velocity Prairie Thunder 250 on TSN. NASCAR flagman Sean Gibbs prepares to throw the green here at White Group Raceway as we return to racing here on lap 110. Hathaway on the bottom this time. Remember on the outside, he was really affected by that bump. Lapsovich almost looked like he went high enough on the racetrack to try to avoid it. It looks like he backed down a little bit. Extra cautious going into that turn to avoid that bump. Going to the outside. He doesn't look uncomfortable up there at all. Mark Dilly working the bottom group. Dilly having a great run here. We've talked about him a couple of times, but he really is having one of the best runs of 2016 for that 02 car. We talked about Caden Lapsovich having a borrowed spotter. He's a local guy. When they pushed that car to tech inspection earlier today, I only recognized two of the people that were pushing it. Hey, they're getting it done in the early going of this one. 112 laps in the books of a scheduled 250. Remember, this is a brake race, so there will be no scheduled pit stops. What they do is they throw the caution, everybody stops, you get an allotted amount of time to change tires and make any adjustments you need. Yeah, NASCAR gives them three minutes from the time they say go to get all the work done, and then you have to be ready for the call back to the line. See that orange and blue, number 53, the Empire Mechanical sponsor, Dodge of Noel Dowler having a great run. That car still in one piece and problems. The 56 of Kelly Admiral goes around in turn number four. Uh, once again, we see a car spin. Doesn't look like they made any contact, so they'll be able to refire. But a great inconvenience as we go on board. And he was battling with the 53 of Dowler and contact, and that was that. There's not much you can do. He's committed to the bottom. The door got closed, and he couldn't get out of it fast enough, Dave. But Adam, this does bring us to the halfway break and opportunity for pit stops. And you see all the drivers stopped along pit road, fuel going in, right side tires. Let's head down with Todd. Having a look at that three car, the leader as we get to the midway point of the race. Got the fan going on the left rear, just making some slight adjustments. He's a little tight in and a little snappy loose off. The 76 car, Cade Lapsovich running second. They want it freed up just a little bit. A number of adjustments on that 0-2 car, including the Panhard bar for the 0-2 team currently running third. The 32, boy, they made that early pit stop to pull out that spring rubber. Certainly has worked for them, guys. 
And you can see everybody making sure they get everything right. The wrench going in the back window of the 59 of Gary Klute, even polishing the windshield of the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Jason Hathaway is your leader at the halfway mark. The remaining 18 NASCAR late models are full of fuel, have fresh right side tires as they prepare to get back to green here in the Velocity Prairie Thunder 250. Jason Hathaway alongside him, the 76 of Caden Lapsovich, and we're back to green. They charged down into turn number one. Oh, Shania LaForce got her on backwards. There was a chain reaction there, Dave. She was at the back of the line and spun herself around. We're not going to see a yellow, I don't think, if she has gotten back rolling. And we should say that the number nine, Jason Hankowitz, received the free pass during that last caution. But look at how far ahead Hathaway has managed to extend his lead over the rest of the field. He's flying. Lapsovic struggles in turn one on the outside. The car washes up the racetrack. That's allowed Mark Dilley, who we're riding with right now, to really get a run into the turn. You can see that bump going into turn number one. That was a great shot and a perfect example of how it upsets cars. You can almost hear it. Basically explaining what's happening around them. So when you get by this car, they get by you, you're clear. Sort of lets the driver choose if they want to keep working that groove or if they want to back out, get in line, and choose another battle. To put it in layman's terms, it's almost like listening to a radio traffic report when you're in your car on the highway as we go three wide, LaForce on the inside. Shania does a nice job to keep that car on the bottom, let the leaders go by. That could have been a problem. Kate Lapsovich in the 76, though, goes back to work hunting the Chaco number three of Jason Hathaway, and look at how close he is. Well, Caden really looks comfortable on the bottom. You see him rotate the center and get off the corner really well on the bottom of the racetrack. He got stuck up on the outside for a little while. In position to give him a nudge if he needs to, but he doesn't as he's two abreast, two rows deep. The top four cars all covered by a blanket here in Saskatchewan, and it's Caden Lapsovich on the inside of the lead. This is just how it goes at Wyatt Group Raceway. Lots of room, lots of grooves. We always see them too wide. Hathaway battling back in the upstairs groove in the Ray Bestis Chevrolet, but it's the number 76 of young Caden Lapsovich who knows his way into the lead. I can tell you, he led that lap by thousands of a second. Hathaway led the lap before by thousands of a second. Now they all switch lanes. Now that's important though for the 76 of Lapsovich coming into this race second in points. Every single point counts and leading a lap will get him one of those bonus points. Mark Dilley slides up the racetrack. Here goes LeMay to the bottom. They make contact. Both cars spin out. Oh and that's heartbreak for both drivers. You saw Alex LeMay immediately hit the ignition switch to try and get that Can-Am port fired and look at Mark Dilley. The yellow flag flies here at Wyant Group Raceway. Once again, a spin with no apparent damage. Let's have a look here at LeBay working the inside. There's not much to tell there. LeBay just slid up the racetrack into Mark. He might have hit the rumble strip and got knocked up, but definite contact. Todd? Little handling adjustment to the 0-2, making sure everything's okay. Perhaps a little more serious on the 32 behind. They're checking the toe on the front, trying to make sure that 32 machine is good to go before sending Alex LeBay back out. Mark Dilley rolls out. You can see it in his eyes. He'll have his elbows out when we go back to green, but Caden Lapsovich is your new leader. 16-year-old Caden Lapsovich from Grimsby, Ontario, driving his family's Fastline Motorsports entry as control of the field here in Saskatoon. As we get back to racing and lead him up to the green off of turn number four, he'll have half the way up on the outside. They roar down into turn number one. Lapsovich a couple of feet off that yellow line. Hathaway even higher. But look at the run Hathaway gets off of turn two. Jamie Krishik in the 0-9 getting the free pass during that last caution, and it's Hathaway into the lead, and a bump going into turn number one from Caden Lapsovich. That bump was almost at the start-finish line. Caden was still coming out of turn four. When they made contact, Hathaway was already coming down the track. And that wasn't just a nudge. That was a significant bump. It was likely all Jason Hathaway could do to hang on to that one. So Caden continues to work the inside. Hathaway, that car just looks so smooth coming off the top of the racetrack. 
On board, Caden Latsovich. You can hear him working the throttle as he brings it up to speed. Down into turn number one. Over that bump. Still on the inside of the three of Jason Hathaway. As they go side by side down the back straightaway. Dave, we can't stress how unusual it is to race on a third mile oval and have three, four feet between cars when you're side by side. So a flash, a good battle for six between the 18 of Alex Tagliani and the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. So there is good racing all the way through this field. And what, what I mean, normally when you see door-to-door -door racing, there's rubbing, there's beating and banging. Here, the grooves are so far apart, these drivers have a lot of room to work with as Caden clears the three of Hathaway. Clears them, but not by much. That was the bumper of the three-car of Hathaway. Now we'll ride on board with Jason Hathaway in the number three. Let's see if we can keep pace with the young Caden Lapsovich. It's a battle for 10th spot. How about the 25 of Kevin Watrous? A little lean there on the CTL 59 of Gary Clint, but they both make it through the corner unscathed. You know, Kevin said today after practice he's really enjoying his experience on an oval track. For someone who's only raced road courses, we've watched a lot of them. It's a big learning curve. We watched Andrew Ranger, LP Dumoulin, and a lot of talented race car drivers make that adjustment. Saw a quick flash on the onboard of the 32 of Alex LeBay. Remember, he's trekking back to the front after earlier problems getting involved in that spin with the 02 of Mark Dilley. And that car looks absolutely twitchy, Dave, of Alex LeBay. And look at his hands working in there. We saw them trying to adjust the toe. He's a busy driver. And there is the 02 of Mark Dilley in the Leland Johnsonville Ford Fusion chasing the 53 of Noel Dowler and the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. That's a battle for seventh spot. Man, that Noel Dowler number 53 team, they did a ton of work on the front end of that race car since the race in Edmonton. And you have to remember, normally these teams have a full week in between races to work on it. Only a few days in between last race and this one. LP Dumoulin on the inside of DJ Kennington in the 17. They battle for the fourth position. And WeatherTech Dodge looking very, very good here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and Wine Group Raceway. We know this is one of LP Dumoulin's favorite tracks. He got a top three finish in Edmonton, and as we said, he has won here before. Stretching it out at the front of the field is the 76 of Gaten Lapsovich. The three of Jason Hathaway losing touch a little bit. You know, he could be biding his time right now, just putting in laps for that charge to the finish. Chances are we're going to have more yellow flags tonight, Dave. And history will show these teams to see a little bit of smoke off the Bellotti number 25 of Kevin Poitras. The right front smoking just a little bit, but history has shown a late race yellow on a series of these races in years gone by. We have seen green-white checkers here at Saskatoon before as DJ Kennington riding the outside groove of the 18 EpiPen machine of Alex Tagliani. They race for fifth. Little nuts. Now you're clear. But Alex Tagliani got a bump there from the 17. Working in through lap traffic, the 51. We got problems on the front shoot. Right in front. Right in front of that battle we were watching. Kevin Poitras, significant front end damage. And the 09 of Jamie Krizik. I'm not sure how badly damaged he is. Yes, he does have the car running. He'll refire. But you can hear that from our broadcast position here on the front straightaway. Have another look at what happened. So Poitras up the racetrack. They just kind of met in the middle. Man, how many times are we going to see the 09 car up in the air? His teammate, Riley Siebert, did the same thing at Edmonton. There could be a lot of damage underneath that race car, Dave. Yeah, and they're going to check out the 09. The crew goes to work. They'll change the right rear. It's flat, and look at this. The CBR team, a CBRT team goes to work again on the nose of another Ford Fusion. That 25 is torn up. I wonder what it is about the 09 and the 69 last week that gets them airborne like that as we're under yellow in Saskatoon. Your front row of the Velocity Prairie Thunder 250 consists of Justin's Rookie of the Year contender, Kate Lapsovich, and 39-year-old series vet Jason Hathaway running for Ed Hackens in racing as we get set for the green flag here with 50 laps to go. and Caden Lapsovich got a great launch down into turn number one. 
Half the way up on the outside, tries to get some bite. He won't get it as Lapsovich noses back into the lead down the back straightaway. The one thing with Caden's car, he has not been getting great restarts. It takes a couple laps for that car to come in. And you know what? We, we've talked about how much racing room there is here at this track. Uh, you see large spaces between the cars, but you have to remember it is a third of a mile, and some of these cars are starting to beat and bang on each other. Well, the time is going to come. There's less than 50 laps to go, and while we've got time, we should say fantastic job. This is the only facility we come to that's run by a club. The Saskatoon Stock Car Racing Association does an awesome job, and there's nothing we've encountered today that Cliff couldn't handle. <laughs> Except maybe that 17 getting a little crossways. DJ Kennington's going to have that handled as he slides back to a battle with the 0-2 of Mark Dilley. The 53 of Noel Dowler just ahead. Both of those guys sliding those race cars out of the corner. It's time to go, and they know it. Inside, that's your door. If Steve Simmons sells a look, the whole field's lined up behind him, so you better pedal as hard as you can. You know what's interesting is you see the cars work that bump in turn number one. All of the cautions we've had so far here this evening have come in turn number four. So the drivers may be playing it a little bit cautious going into one and then getting on the gas coming out of four. Here's LP Dumoulin. I believe Davey's a little bit faster than the cars he's racing. It's a frustrating situation for a driver. You're caught in behind two drivers. You can't really do anything, but you want to go. And it looks like DJ Kennington in the same boat here as he battles with the 59 of Gary Clute and the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. That's a dice for ninth spot. So far, these guys have kept their noses relatively clean. All of these cars, they've still got all the tools of the trade, Dave. Their bumpers and their fenders. It's about time to start using them. <laughs> it really is, and there are battles all over this track. Dulé's going to go around the Bulldog Don. So 27 of Andrew Ranger. Ranger, here's the all-clear. He'll duck back down. Noel Dowler not quite able to fill that hole and make a challenge for position as Lacroix gets into the back of DJ Kennington racing for 10. Going and you can see the cars bottoming out through that bump in turn number one on board the Young's Tree Service number 56 of Kelly Admiral. So impressed with the job Kelly Admiral's done these last two races, doing a great job racing with some really good equipment. Single file now, everybody chasing the youngster, the 76 of Kane Lapsovich, and problems now on the 0 1 of Shania LaForce. That'll draw the caution. You can hear the tire gone down or suspension problems on the 01. I cannot it's identify. Okay, that was the sound of a rim scraping the asphalt. And Adam, we're seeing smoke out of the back end of the three of Jason Hathaway. Oh, man, that's just what they don't need is more bad luck. The driver running in the second position, and that's a significant amount of smoke. It really is, and you don't see a lot of buildup on the back bumper of that car, so it hasn't been smoking too, too long, but the crew looks very, very worried as the Ray Best of Chevrolet is smoking, but still in second. Welcome back to Wyatt Group Raceway. I'm Dave Bradley, along with me is Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's trackside. And you'll notice for this restart, number six, the number three of Jason Hathaway is not there. He's been on and off pit road, but it doesn't look good for that car, does it, Todd? Work continues on that three, even though we're back to green. Frustration mounting. They're concentrating on that right rear, trying to find out where that smoke is coming from. As mentioned, they thought it was brake pads. Looks like it might be a little more involved than that. Craig Masters overseeing the work being done on the three machine, but another heartbreak for that racing. They've been fast every week, Dave. Yeah, it could be an axle. And, and when you see smoke coming out of the back end when it's leaning on it in the turns like that, it's always one of the possibilities. But as he continues to go laps down, we have a wonderful race at the front of the field led by Caden Lapsovich and now the 47 WeatherTech Dodge of LB Dumoulin holding down second. I can't believe the number of different drivers that have had their chance to get up through the field towards the front. LB Dumoulin, he has not been up here all night long. He's looked good, but for him to be in second place, there's barely a mark on that race car. Speaking of marks, the 59 of Gary Clute does have a broken front fender, but that's not slowing him down as he's tucked in behind the Empire Mechanical number 53 of Noel Dowler. He's having a great run today. Oh, there, inside. Right with you. Steve Simmons gives the news. Third spot on the line. 
line between the 18 and the 27. Tag tag. And look at that tank drives it deep into the corner. Well, up the racetrack just corner. a little bit. All clear, all clear. Give it to Andrew Ranger, though. Started on the pole. He's playing around the front of the field pretty much all evening long. And if there's any driver comfortable with the outside, it is Ranger. Here we see a battle for the eighth spot. It's Mark Dillian, the 0-2, the 17 of DJ Kennington. And now it looks like Tagliani is going to get the upper hand in the can short, number 18. He'll pick up third spot, chasing the 47 of Dumoulin and the 76 of Caden Lapsovich. Lapsovich is your leader. Finally able to clear the 27 and run up to the wall. Look ahead, Caden Lapsovich is stretched out to about a 10 car length advantage. Back to a battle for seventh spot now between the 17 of DJ Kennington and the outside group working for the 59 of Gary Clute. And here comes LeBay in the 32 to the inside fifth spot for the driver of the Ford Fusion. Great battle for fifth right in front of them is a great carrot. The fourth position currently held by Andrew Ranger in the Mopar 27. And he's running an unorthodox race line, Dave, not coming down to the bottom of the racetrack at all. The MFP dodge, the number 53 of Gold Geller hanging on the outside. Tucked in behind a multi-time Pinty's series champion of Andrew Ranger, and you heard it, yellow flag is out. Jamie Krizik and Hankowicz in the nine, both around in turn number four. Shania LaForce has to lock it down right in front of the race leader, Caden Lapsovich, to avoid contact. And there is a good look at the number three of Jason Hathaway. His net's not down, his helmet's coming off. They're done for the night. But how about this driver, the 76 of Caden Lapsovich, well in control of this race and has been at the front all race long. If his age isn't enough, the fact is most of the racetracks we've been to this year, he's never seen before. He has his father watching on and giving him all the coaching tips he needs. He's constantly talking on the radio to his 16-year-old youngster, those two work as a great team. Jeff Lapsovich, who would you want as a mentor? <laughs> and Lapsovich stepped away from the driver's seat and put his young son behind the wheel of this number 76 race car and hasn't looked back. He is more involved in the NASCAR Pinty Series than he ever has been as we've got five laps to go. Can Kate Lapsovich seal the deal and earn his first NASCAR Series win? LP Dumoulin hanging in tough on the outside. They're side by side into turn number three, but they're not pulling away. Tagliani and Ranger. And now Dumoulin up on the outside will sneak his way into the lead in the weather tech dodge. Dumoulin looking to take over sole possession of first place. Lapsovich not willing to give up his inside position. And he won't go away quietly. Lapsovich on the inside, rubbing fenders with the 47. And Dumoulin steps wrong through that bump in turn number one. Crossways, but gathers it back up. How did he hang on to that race car? Dumoulin slides it through one and two, and he's going to try to attack again. Two laps to go as they cross the strike this time at Wyatt Group Raceway. And it is the youngster, Kate Lapsovich, looking for his NASCAR Pinty Series maiden victory. With the white flag about to fly, we've got a great battle for the fourth spot. Third place belongs to the 18 of Alex Dagliani currently, but Lance LeBay and Andrew Ranger battling side by side. Now here comes LeBay for third. LeBay making contact with Alex Tagliani, but Caden Lapsovich will make NASCAR history. The youngest winner in NASCAR history is Caden Lapsovich as he takes the checkered flag here at Saskatoon. There's the proud father with a smile on his face. They really made him work for that one at the end, didn't they? Uh, yeah, burn it out, bud. Just don't blow it up. I can't say enough about that kid. He just drives and digs and digs and digs. And just, you know, for all the people that we stick that stick behind us, Ace Services, Troy Cove Marine, Springer's Meats, Castrol, Cap Car Trucking, uh, my wife back at home with the little kids and, uh, you know, my family and, and her family and everyone that helps us out. And all these guys here, we picked up a surrogate crew here in Saskatoon. And our guys are back at the shop. Just watch TV, I imagine, but uh, you know, I can't thank everyone enough. Awesome day, dad's proud here. We heard Jeff on the radio, permission to burn out is granted. And Papa Joe Lapsovich smiling down on this one. We'll talk to Caden in Victory Lane. And this is going to be an emotional victory lane. Todd Lewis is there. Todd? After being so close, 
earlier this season. Young Caden Lapsovich at 16 years old is victorious for the first time in the NASCAR Pinty Series. What a drive you had. You, the last thing you probably wanted was that late restart, but this car was super strong all day. Oh, I didn't I didn't want to see that caution at all because you know, we didn't have a good get-going car. It took us a couple laps to get going, but uh, you know, once we got going and we were able to clear the 47, we were just, you know, I sat on cruise and was able to go. Um, you know, this is an awesome feeling after coming so close so many times. I'm finally parked here in some victory lane. is awesome, but um, you know, I couldn't do it without all my sponsors. Ace Services. Cashel, Cathcart Trucking, Troy Co. Marine, Epic Race, where JSL Electric, Mom, Dad, everybody back at home. This is an awesome feeling right now. Caden Lapsovich, your winner here in Saskatoon. Papa Joe is proud. <laughs> now you can see Jeff Lapsovich on the phone back home telling family, guess what? We won. And sure enough, he did. LP Dumoulin coming home second. LeBay, a solid third. It's got to feel good for Noel Dowler to come home with a top 10 after the adversity they had. And a top 10 for the 0-2 of Mark Dilley. A good rebound for that team. And Todd's down with a very happy runner-up. LP, you were hoping that this Western trip would be good for your team to build some momentum, another podium result. You're doing it. Yeah, we're very happy for the WeatherTech Ben Mar uh, team. Uh, you know, finish second here again. We had a green, you know, if we had a green white checkered, I think we had a shot to win, but uh, by the outside was a little rough for six laps. So finish second. Caden Laps Savage did a good job. Very happy. We're going to keep the momentum going hometown now. Ready to go. He loves racing in Tour de Viar, and you take a look at the points, and we have a battle at the top. Andrew Ranger still leads, but Caden Lapsovich is knocking on the door. Just one point separates the top two, and how about Alex Tagliani, who missed a race 26 points out? You really can't complain with that as Caden Lapsovich lifts the trophy high for the first time, a race winner in the NASCAR Pinty Series. This race has been brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn by Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. And by Honeygoo from Clean Flow, one honey of a lube. Next stop, Trois-Rivières, Quebec on the streets, Dave. It's tight and it's aggressive and it's a lot of fun. You don't want to miss it. From all of us at Fuel Media Lab, we'll see you there. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.